Hello students, welcome to the session. Today I will be talking about a parasite which comes under nematode that is Vucheraria bancrofti. Vucheraria bancrofti is a somatic nematode which inhabit extraintestinal site example lymphatic system, skin, subcutaneous tissue and there are two forms one is the adult worm which second one is the larval stage. Adult worm of any filarial nematode you can find them as slender round 2 to 10 centimeter in length. It leads to chronic obstructive and inflammatory condition in the patient. Female worms usually produce a larval stages uh, first larval stage is microfilaria which will be actively motile now today I'll be talking about the most widely distributed lymphatic filarial parasite that is Vucheraria bancrofti Vucheraria bancrofti as described by Sushruta it leads to elephantiasis and uh, Vucherer detected microfilaria in the urine for the first time and bancrofti described female worm thus the name Vucheraria bancrofti. If you see the morphology there are two forms for this parasite as it belongs to filarial nematode first one adult worm the second stage larval stage. In case of infection man become the definitive host for the parasite definitive host where you can find the adult worm. Intermediate host for this infection will be a mosquito usually Culex or else Anopheles or Aedes species. Infective form which form of the parasite will enter into human body that is the third stage larva of the parasite filariform larva. So if you see the adult worm what is the morphology of the parasite? It stays in uh, survive in lymphatic vessels or lymph node and uh, survives for around 10 to 15 years. Uh, adult worm will be long, slender and creamy white, thread like, filariform larvae with tapering ends. Males are usually smaller with corkscrew tail, two spicules at the posterior end. They remain coiled with the female which uh, give rise to vivi, um, discharged larva directly. They are viviparous. Female worms are viviparous. Coming to the larval stage, you find as a nematode there are four uh, larval stages in the parasite. The first stage is very important which is the diagnostic form that is named as microfilaria. These microfilaria are demonstrable like in the serum uh, in the patient's peripheral blood. So this is very important stage which you have to distinguish from other filarial form. This microfilaria of Vucheraria bancrofti will have a sheet uh, stage which is very active in blood with the hyaline sheet and the parasite moves within this uh, hyaline sheet. Head end will be blend and the tail end will be pointed. In the unstained preparation it may look colorless transparent but in when you do the staining with gymsa it takes the pink color with the co column of violet nuclei. Somatic cell these nuclei will be absent in the tip or in at the cephalic space. The third stage larva is the infective form for the human being that is filariform larva. If you see the life cycle these filariform enter mo through mosquito bite into the human body. Once the uh, mosquito bite the human body, what happens? The la filariform larva enter, enter through penetration. So these larva filariform penetrate the skin and reaches to lymphatics. After two molting, what happens to this larval stage? It become the adult parasite. So we have male and female fertilization happens and it give rise to microfilaria that is the first larval stage. This microfilaria uh, appearance of microfilaria enter into the peripheral circulation which can be demonstrated in the peripheral smear examination that is the diagnostic stage. So the time taken for this entire cycle in man after the entry of filarial form till the demonstration of uh, microfilaria takes around uh, 8 to 150 days. So this time period is called as pre-patent period. So in case of Vucheraria infection a pre-patent period for uh, in man is 8 to 80 to 150 days and uh, after fertilization what happens to male it dies. Female uh, lives around 5 to 10 years and they can liberate around 50,000 microfilaria larvae per day. Coming to the mosquito cycle, what happens in mosquito? So when a mosquito, especially Culex species, when they uh, feed on human body or when they take the blood meal, they take these microfilaria stage which are there in the peripheral blood. Once it reaches to the peripheral blood, uh, it go for X sheathing. X sheathing means uh, the uh, larval stage is present within this uh, sheet. So this um, destroy that sheet and it comes out within one to two hours after entry into the mosquito's body. And this first stage of larva penetrate stomach wall and it becomes the final stage which is the filariform larva. 
Now this filary form larva stays in mosquito till the mosquito feeds on another human body that uh, it, it becomes infective for the next person. So the mosquito cycle entirely takes around 10 to 14 days after the entry of microfilarial stage till it becomes a filary form larva. It is this time period is called as extrinsic incubation period. The incubation period in mosquito that is around 10 to 14 days. This is the life cycle in short that microfilaria enter into the bloodstream in human being which is taken by the mosquito now mosquitoes body it becomes filary form larval stage now mosquito when it bites to human body these microfilaria um, filary form larva enter into the human body where it becomes the adult worm pathogenesis now pathogenesis of Ucheraria bancrofti usually happens because of three reasons one because of inflammatory damage to the lymphatics it happens because of this live adult worm or it can be because of the dead adult worm the antigen and toxic metabolites from the dead adult worm the second uh, pathogenesis is mainly due to the secondary infection bacterial infection uh, happening in the patient third the host inflammatory response Coming to the lymphatic filariasis, this happens after the mosquito bite around 8 to 16 months, the patient starts showing the symptom. But in some endemic area, you can find the patients asymptomatic, but in acute filariasis patient, you find high grade fever, lymphatic inflammation, enlarged lymph nodes and early pitting type of edema. After 10 to 15 years, it converts to con uh, chronic type of filariasis where it is mainly due to the host immune response or granuloma and the most common manifestation in the patient is hydrocele. Hydrocele is the accumulation of fluid in the cavity and uh, elephantiasis is another form where you find swelling of lower limb. Tropical pulmonary isnophilia or occult filariasis can happen uh, because of the hypersensitivity towards the microfilarial antigen in the patient. So here microfilaria is not uh, detected in the peripheral blood as it is destroyed but uh, it shows nocturnal paroxysmal cough, cough, wheezing, weight loss, low grade fever. The third reaction that is because of the immune complex mediated manifestation happens in kidney or joint. This will be the difference between the classical type of filariasis where the inflammatory uh, response, um, inflammatory changes happens due to developing worm and the adult worm. And in occult filariasis is mainly because of the hypersensitivity reaction towards the microfilarial antigen. How do you do the lab diagnosis for the patient? So most of the time you can identify based on the clinical feature and the history and the uh, area if it is endemic places. So what are the samples collected? Blood sample can be collected. Now the parasite is uh, showing nocturnal periodicity where the uh, microfilaria stages enter into the peripheral blood during night time. So it is ideal to collect the blood sample during this time 9 pm to 2 am. If not, if you are collecting in the daytime, you have to do DEC provocation test. DEC provocation test is to bring the peri uh, parasite peripheral uh, uh, to the peripheral blood. So this is given by oral DEC, diethyl carbamazine to the patient, 2 mg per kg of the body weight and after 30 minutes you can collect the sample, go for the uh, microscopy. Other samples collected will be hydrozyl uh, fluid or urine sample. What are the methods? Direct wet mount where you find the serpentine movement of the microfilaria under microscope. Other methods you can go for peripheral smear examination where it will be stained with Jimsa or Leishman and look for the presence of sheet and the nuclei of microfilaria to distinguish from other species. Concentration of a technique can be done for the blood sample. There is a, a more sensitive technique QBC quantitative buffy coat. Negative sample or if you, you get the negative result if it is occult filariasis, if the patient is uh, suffering from chronic infection or if you collect the sample during wrong time. Other, we have other techniques also to identify microfilarial infection or the filariasis like uh, serology technique, imaging technique, molecular method or xenodiagnosis. In case of occult filariasis where you cannot uh, demonstrate this microfilaria in the peripheral smear, you can go for uh, eosinophilia, checking eosinophilia condition or uh, chest x-ray elevated uh, serum IgE or the obstructive changes in the lungs and uh, treatment is usually given by diethyl carbamazine 6 mg per kg for the body weight for 12 days you have to give it prevention is mainly by controlling the vector which is the mosquito species so I hope you have understood what is filariasis